Holy cow. It's Henry! From Mowers and Blows! What's up, everybody? It's Henry from Mowers and Blows! Good morning. I'm in my backyard today because if you just take a look behind me, I've got about 15 push mowers. Out of the 15 push mowers, two or three were given to me from my friend Larry, of which I've given away a couple already to Bill Martini. Uh, stuff that I just didn't want to work on because it was just too old for me, you know? That would cost some money. <laughs> so uh, Bill can screw with them. It's your problem now, Bill! Um, anyhow, I have about four more mowers that I need to address. Uh, out of this bunch, four need issues that needs to be corrected. Of them was this Murray 520 mulcher. Five horsepower, 20 wide mulcher. It's not designed to have a bag, it just mulches. But I always really like this deck because it has a very unusual shape to it. Almost like a sports car. Very rounded and sleek. I really like it. And it's in really good shape too. The problem is this old Tecumseh engine in it has a messed up gas cap. I had to put like a plastic bag over it so it wouldn't evaporate the gas, whatever. And also while it starts and runs seemingly fine, it has a little bit of an, I want to say it's an oil leak down there. It's very dark and wet, right? And it looks like it's around the head gasket area. But it runs and works just fine, you know? But I wanted to swap this uh, engine out because I hate this engine, right? Um, it has that Tecumseh, the super old Tecumseh carburetor with the black rubbery primer bulb. While that black primer, uh, primer bulb usually works much better than their... Uh, the red ones, you guys know what I'm talking about, the Tecumseh carburetors with the red primer bulb that get very stiff and rigid and very hard over the years. So uh, you always have problems with that. That actually actually works, you know, so it's uh, pretty amazing. But anyway, I want to swap out this engine and get rid of it. Maybe I'll sell this engine locally for 20 bucks or something, or, uh, you know, maybe one of my local boys needs it for something, but I definitely don't want it. So I want to put another engine on here. As you guys remember from another episode recently, I found this lawn boy on the side of the street. It has a quantum engine on it. And get, re get ready for this. It's an auto choke. It started up on the first pull. But as you can see, this deck is done so today, I'm going to take this engine off of this bad deck because I'm going to trash this deck, right? Engine still works. I don't like that engine. While it still works, I don't like it. So I'm going to put this engine on that deck, which I do like. So I'm going to be making, essentially, one decent mower out of two yucky ones. So today is another beautiful day. Perfect day for wrenching in the driveway and get the last bit of UV rays and vitamin D that you can get before the winter starts. True test, this has been sitting in my yard for about a couple of weeks. I haven't done a thing to it other than the fact that I stowed it after I got it running. So here we go. I'm gonna, not gonna, I'm gonna, I know there's gas in there. Otherwise I wouldn't have put this, eh, you know what, I'm not sure. <laughs> so I'm priming it right now as I look here. And there is no gas in there. I'll tell you what, let's try to start it anyway. Could be some fumes left, whatever. I'm not sure this throttle even works, to be honest with you. Put a little bit of gas in there, primed it. So there you go, see? Engine runs. Sounds pretty good too. But I really like the deck, the way it looks. This one here, like I said, it's an auto choke. Found it on the street has no gas in it either, but 
just see if it starts. It's an auto choke, it didn't do anything to it. Here we go. <laughs> Starts on the first pull. Uh, surges just slightly, so I think it might just need a quick and dirty carburetor clean. But either way though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this engine off and put this engine on. Then you're probably thinking to yourself, Hey Henry, that's a green cover on a red mower. Well, I thought of that too. Wanted to show you the deck up close. It's really cool looking. Like a sports car. Just like the design a lot, you know? Anyway, so um, this engine I took off of... Uh, the shared keyway Troy built that I gave the Dunsky deck to um, Bill Martini. Well, here's the engine for it. Um, while I did change the keyway on here, right? The sheared key. It is missing some other things that prevent this from starting at this moment. Uh, the screw for the brake, flywheel, brake, kill switch assembly. So you just need to put a, a spring in there or replace this assembly maybe this engine will run but it has a nice red cover for a quantum hopefully this red cover will fit on this lawn boy quantum engine and then once this engine is on this red deck it'll have a red cover and that'll look pretty good so let's get started by removing the engine mounting bolts on both of these and do a swap -a -roo. As you saw, it was really easy for me to remove the engine from the Murray. Use some brake parts cleaner and degreaser just to clean up that area full of grease. I wasn't so lucky with this one. I had to get a breaker bar to get the crankshaft bolt off to get the blade off, right? And then I, while I did extract one engine mounting bolt pretty well, half inch, these other two are very stubborn. As you guys know with these old mowers, right? If it has never been removed before, probably from the manufacturer over the years of rust and heat and all that bolts are probably rusted right into the engine block you know what I mean so if you really turn it too hard or use a breaker bar you're gonna strip those bolts and break them and that one piece is gonna get stuck in the engine block and now you gotta drill them out so while I'm very impatient with that stuff usually and I do break them I'm gonna take my time this time I'm going to use some penetrating oil from my friends over at Lucas Oil. We're going to have this percolate for a bit. I'm going to drown this bolt, these two right here on top. I'm going to drown them with this penetrating oil. Let it, let, it, let it work its magic. Let it sit for a while. I'm going to put a half inch socket on here with a breaker bar. And see if I'll be able to extract them without breaking the bolt. I don't want to do any drilling. I definitely don't. Because I expected this to be a fast engine swap change. Henry, don't do it yet. Yep. 
It doesn't seem like it'll it'll give right away, you know. Yep, it'll be, it'll break. So I might even go get a blowtorch and heat up the uh, bolts. Heat them up and then shoot some more penetrating oil on it. Yep, that'll break. I can feel it. I can feel it flexing a little. So that's not going to work. Got to get the blowtorch out. Blowtorch. Amy, you should go and get a fire extinguisher. Eh, I don't think it'll catch on fire. But it is catching on fire. Oh, be quiet. That's not going to work, Henry. It is if you try this. It looks like it's going to break. Feels like that. Ooh. Ooh. Guess what? I think this one might work. Mm -hmm. This one works. This one moves a quarter turn. So because it moves, I'm going to spray it some more with this. Let it get into the joints. I think this one's starting to move a little too. Maybe not, because it just broke. See? Damn it! Let's see this one. This one had some promise. Is that even spinning? It is. This one's turning. So if I have to just drill one hole, I guess that's all right. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to do some drilling. <laughs> Thank you.
So how about that? Usually I don't have any luck drilling. But this time I actually managed to center the drill, uh, center the hole drill, the hole drill, center the hole with the drill. And I actually got it through there. Uh, I actually used like four or five drill bits and uh, I hate drilling, it's terrible. But what can you do? You have, you have to do it, right? So I've got the engine mounted. I had some uh, open-ended uh, bolt and a nut thin diameter that fits through the hole that I drilled. And uh, I've got the other two um, half-inch bolts on there. So this is, it's very tight, it's very good. So now I'm taking off this uh, Lawn Boy one because it's green, replacing it with this red Troy built one. I could simply rip the Troy built sticker off and just put a uh, and just leave it blank. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm gonna do. Then we're gonna fire this puppy up and maybe give it a quick and dirty because while it was running fine. Um, While it was running fine, I'm curious to see what the bowl looks like, you know? Because it uh, was hesitating just a little bit, you know? But how about that, huh? Look at this mower now. It's good. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it starts up after all that. Awesome. I'm gonna take the uh, air cleaner cover off and uh, drop the bowl. To see the condition of the carburetor. See if we can get it running a little bit more smoother. So here we go. We're set up here to take a look at this carburetor. You guys know how easy it is to remove this carburetor. Good air filter. The rest of it kind of dirty. Looks pretty good. Three five sixteenths. This is an auto choke. So we don't worry too much about the gasket. It appears that it's very dirty. It looks like we're going to have to end up taking this thing off again. Two Phillips screws, take off the top, comes right off. Half inch over here. Don't strip it. The auto choke mechanism. It is filthy though. Close clamp, move it to the side, pull the fuel line off. Plug it with something. Two three eighths to remove the carburetor off the engine block. and give it a little twist. And here is your carburetor. That's dirty. It's yucky. Just the way I like it. The Briggs & Stratton has a recessed nut in here. Get a ratchet and socket. Turn pretty easily. A lot of fuel's coming out. It 
it ran pretty good, so I'm not surprised that it's clear. Let's take a look at inside the bowl. Pretty clean, see? Has some little dust particles in there, maybe a drop of water, but really not bad at all. I'm just going to clean up this uh, carburetor a little bit, <laughs> actually a lot of bit. Good old air. It's free too. Actually, you don't even need carb spray. probably work you know but got some contact cleaner from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products Plug hole. Henry, drop an old casket. Got it. I'm going to put this all back again, see if it runs a little better. So, as I was putting this back together again, I noticed that this spring was missing. So, I just put a new spring on there. That's not the exact spring that it's supposed to be, but as long as you can go like this. good the auto choke it sticks a little but I'm not sure whether or not it had a spring in the beginning or did I blow it away you know what I mean just not sure but we got a spring now so uh, the spring keeps the choke flap closed when you start it the heat opens this up and lets you start it easier later when it's warm I'm gonna put everything back together again now So here we go. Uh, I just put everything back and uh, honestly, it really wasn't that dirty, but I did find that spring to put on, so let's see how it starts. I love this mower now. It looks so cool. Now I'm going to take the wheels off of this, plus the belt, belt cover, um, PTO engagement, you know, for the drive, the cables, and the bail handles, because I believe this handle is the same kind for the uh, Toro recyclers. So, um, just going to strip this of the parts that I might need and uh, dump the deck to the curb. I have this engine if anybody wants it. So there we go. He stripped down some parts that I could use like those wheels and most importantly this Toro type. 
bail handle assembly with the uh, self propulsion handles there. And also both cables work, so that's very valuable. I tried to take the transmission out and it looks like it actually works, but there's a strip bolt over here and I'm not even gonna spend any more time stripping that down. But uh, got some gears here, belt covers. That'll be good. Now, remember this one here, right? You guys remember this one? I uh, got this from Motherload 27, right? And uh, Motherload 27, this mower, while it runs great, it didn't come with a air filter cover and filter. So I just basically did a makeshift one with a pre-filter and a sushi container takeout. As you guys know, I wrote to Kohler and I told them, hey, people who bought your Toro Recycler, they had the, uh, they were missing a cap, right? And so um, he sent me a new cap with a new filter. Of course, I told them that I had the three tab one which is the reason why they sent me the four tab one because the three tab one was discontinued. So now all I have to do is, uh, oh, they sent me this stuff for free because I told them I had the recalled one. When in fact, I just needed this uh, cover over here. Got a new filter and cover. Buttoned up. Shout out to Jashawn McDuffie from Greenville, North Carolina for buying a couple of my <laughs> Really appreciate your support. Also to Frank Shank from South Fork, Pennsylvania for buying a sticker. Also, a huge shout out to my buddy, Casey Ellis, over in Oxford, North Carolina. He is a YouTuber also. Go check out his YouTube channel at Ellis Mowers. Give him a subscribe. Tell him Henry said. And a special shout out to Mindy Kern over in Yukon, Oklahoma. She's the Vice President of Operations of Joe's Hand Cleaner a division of clean products. They sent me a box with three different types of their products. One being a hand sanitizer, one a hand scrub, and uh, a um, little container of um, hand cleaner wipes, all from Joe's Hand Cleaner. This one over here is their all-purpose one. I'm assuming this is your main product. I think it's made very cool because it's molded with a little bit of a hook here. So you can just hook it conveniently somewhere and your hands are dirty, just got finished wrenching. We're just gonna give it a try here. Ooh, nice little pink consistency here with a little foam, contains lanolin and it's waterless. So you don't need any water. Feels a little bit like a uh, hand lotion with a little bit of a uh, foam consistency, kind of like uh, shaving foam, you know? mixed with hmm, smells wonderful so i want to show you something else uh i used to use i used to use lemon gojo and while it does work very well right if you keep it uh, stored for a while it stinks i mean once you put it on your hands right it does get it clean but it stinks so uh, this is designed to just let you do some scrubbing with your hands, cleaning it, right? And then basically, you could just wipe it off with a cloth or something like that. You don't really need water. Or you could go um, to your faucet, whatever, and rinse it off with water. But uh, go check out Joe's Hand Cleaner. These guys have been in business for 71 years and all in the same family. It's a family-owned business. So go check them out over at joeshandcleaner.com. Thanks a lot, Mindy, for uh, sending me this. And I really appreciate uh, your support of mowers and blowers. And also for showing all my viewers what a great product you have.
Just took a cloth. Very clean. Works great. And by the way, thanks for the t-shirt too. Really appreciate it. In a previous episode, I said that my Craftsman 19.2 power drill, cordless, I've had this for like 10 years, right? I charge it once and then I use it for maybe five minutes. It's got no juice anymore. This is all the way, see? It doesn't hold the charge anymore. So I figured I need to, use, uh, to go buy a new battery not so much a new drill. Even though I could use a new drill, but why go and spend all that money on a new drill when I just go get a new battery? So they don't make the OEM 19.2 volts from Die Hard Sears Craftsman anymore. They got the fake Chinese ones. Well, I found one for $16. That's pretty cheap. Came in the mail. Wow. Talk about copy, huh? It's exactly the same. They're identical. Identical. Except for the words on it, of course. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I have to charge this, but. Strong. There we go. 16 bucks. Awesome, huh? Anyway, I got this other box uh, yesterday. I opened, I uh, sliced it open already. Holy cow. So a guy named Jordan um, from Heimvision contacted me about a, a month ago or so. He asked me if I'd like to try out one of his products on, that he has listed on Amazon. And I says, oh, I get a lot of those solicitations all the time, but they want you to buy it first, do a review on their product, and then uh, they'll refund you the money. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. So I said, look, I'd be happy to review your products, right? As a matter of fact, I, I could use a surveillance system around here, you know what I mean? It's a lot of nuts in this area. Anyway. So I said, uh, if you'd like for me to review one of your products, I'd be happy to do so. But I ain't buying it first. You send it to me. And the guy goes, okay. Here it is. He sent it to me. I didn't pay him anything. So I'm going to do a review on this uh, when I get some mowers out of the way. But uh, that came last night. Anyway, that's my episode for today. Uh, making one good push mower out of two. And it looks great. I also put that cover on that uh, Toro Recycler. Uh, we tried out uh, Joe's all-purpose hand cleaner, and it works great. I feel super clean. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Because the UPS guy screwed this up. I'm going to see you next time on Mowers and Blowers.